What's going on, everybody? Welcome in the Vikings Now by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman. I'll be your host for today's show. And you guessed it. We are talking about Dalvin Cook for the 1,000th time this offseason. We're going to be kind of breaking down what the heck is really going on with the Dalvin Cook situation. Kevin Seifert, the ESPN beat reporter for the Minnesota Vikings, he dropped a great article kind of explaining the full situation around Dalvin Cook and whether the Vikings are going to cut him, whether they are going to trade him. So I'm going to be diving into all that and more and kind of giving my whole thoughts about the situation. But guys, I declared a sub battle on our Chicago Bears channel this week. They're a bigger dog than us here at Chat Sports. You know, they're the Goliath, we're the David, and we are going to try to take them down. And right now, starting this week, we're starting at zero subs. So help us out here. Hit that subscribe button. We're just going to keep you posted with news, rumors, whatever it may be. Really helps us out here at Vikings Now by Chat Sports. So go down there and hit that subscribe button. But let's talk about it. Will Dalvin Cook be a Minnesota Viking next season? I swear my thoughts have switched on this at least a thousand times during this offseason. You know, if you asked me three months ago, I would have said for sure not. He will be gone. He will be traded or cut away from the Minnesota Vikings. And now I'm kind of indifferent. I really don't know where they're going to go. And honestly, who knows? Like, I feel like this situation with the Vikings, I feel like originally they had a full intention to move off of Dalvin Cook. But now I kind of think the Vikings are getting second thoughts on the whole thing. But again, it starts with money with Dalvin Cook. This has been kind of the whole, this has kind of started the whole situation and the whole Dalvin Cook drama with the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, you know, Kwesi Adolfa Mensa, our new second year GM for the Vikes, he's a very analytical driven general manager in the NFL. And with the Vikings re-signing Alexander Madison to a two-year, $7 million deal, a lot of Vikings fans have kind of put the pieces together and said, there's no chance that the Vikings spend $20 million on this upcoming year's cap space on the running back position. And if the Vikings would cut him, they would save $9 million after June 1st. Obviously, we're already at, at that June 1st deadline. This was originally $11 million, but since Dalvin Cook got that shoulder sur surgery this offseason, it, it locked in two million dollars. This is what Kevin Seifert uh, said about the Dalvin Cook situation, kind of just talking about his overall game from this past year, and I thought he did a great job of summing it up. He said he led the NFL with 62 carries that either lost or did not gain a yard. I'll repeat that. He led the NFL with 62 carries that either lost or did not gain a yard. And as ESPN's Bill Barnwell noted, only 34.5% of his carries gained a positive total of yards over expectation in next-gen stats model. The second lowest rate among running backs with at least 200 carries in 2022. In other words, Dalvin Cook was less consistent in 2022 than he has ever been. And I've shown you guys this graphic, the rushing yards over expected. It is a huge nerd analytical stat, but I think it does a really good job of kind of portraying Dalvin Cook's kind of... Uh, Lack of consistency at the running back position because we've seen his highlights. If you go watch his highlight tape from 2022, he still has the big runs. He had that big run against Miami, the big run against Buffalo, the screen pass against the Indianapolis Colts. Like He still has that home run ability, but if we're talking about rushing yards over expected, that 2020 season, he was fantastic. You could have made an argument it was either him or Derrick Henry for the best running back in the league, but the, for the first time in Dalvin's career, the rushing yards over expected – has hit the negative. And overall, I just don't think Dalvin is the same guy anymore. I think he's just a different, it's a different type of running back. Like we've seen him so often now in the past two years. First time he gets hit with, con like first time contact hits him, he just goes down. Like I feel like he doesn't run with that power anymore. Like I always said with Dalvin, he had a great combination, power, speed, elusiveness. Like I really felt like Dalvin could do it all. Now I just feel like he's just kind of that home run threat. Like Dalvin, he can still get those 50, 60, 70-yard runs, those breakaway runs, but it's about what you do in the trenches, in between the tackles, those three, the four, the five-yard runs. He doesn't really fall forward anymore. I just overall don't think Dalvin is the same guy. But I ask you guys, will Dalvin Cook be a Viking next season? I'm going to make this the pin comment on today's video. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say. Give me a Y for S or Y for yes, or an N for no down in the comments section. YouTube's going to throw an ad break your way. Sit back, let it play, and answer today's pin comment. Overall, I actually think the Vikings are torn. I kind of mentioned this off the top of today's video. I think the Vikings went into the offseason fully expecting to move off of Dalvin Cook. But I do think some second thoughts have kind of creeped into the Vikings' 
kind of back of their minds a little bit because we do know Dalvin Cook obviously got that shoulder surgery that he's been dealing with for about three years now, and it seems like he pops that shoulder out about once a month when he's kind of going through an NFL season. So I do think the Vikings are kind of torn on whether to bring him back or not. But I got four reasons why, honestly, I think the Vikings are considering bringing him back. Talk about a leader that Dalvin Cook is. Like, yeah, we can talk about the rushing yards over expected, all the analytical numbers, and kind of seeing his drop off in production over the past couple of years. But he is a great locker room guy. He's just a great kind of person in the community of Minnesota. Like, what he has done for that community and that city has been phenomenal. And then also, you can view this as a positive or a negative, the boomer bust runs from Dalvin Cook. Obviously, we've seen the home run threats even still this past season. He's just got that boomer bust kind of tendencies now in his game. And then the healthy shoulder. You know, maybe Quasey's looking at the healthy shoulder. And maybe with a fully kind of shoulder ready to go, he'll be better at getting those four-yard, five-yard pickups. And then also the shaky old line play from last season. Obviously, our tackles are great. Christian Darisol, Brian O'Neill. But the interior of the offensive line from Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, and Ed Ingram, those, those three were really shaky in this last season. But if we're taking a look at the Vikings running back room right now, honestly, I think it's absolutely loaded. And that's kind of where I'm at this spot where I am okay if the Vikings were to move off a guy like Dalvin Cook. Like Alexander Madison, I am a big fan of him. Kane Wangu, kind of that special teams gadget guy that we've had. I think he has three kick returns for touchdowns in his first two seasons in the NFL. Ty Chandler, the stud out of North Carolina and Tennessee. I am a big fan of his. Then who we drafted in the seventh round this past season? Dwayne McBride. I am a big fan of him, his as well. This is why I also think, like, if you were going to move off Dalvin Cook, you can manage without him. Like, we've seen what Kevin O'Connell... Um, when he was with Sean McVay and they won that Super Bowl, they had more of a running back by committee system with Cooper Cup being the focal point. Focal point. Like, I do think, like, the Vikings can kind of emulate what the Rams had in that one year with Justin Jefferson getting most of the attention and kind of having a split backfield and kind of a running back by committee back there. I think this Vikings running back room, it's talented, it's deep enough where you can move off Dalvin Cook and just kind of rip that Band-Aid off. But I'll tell you what, one Vikings player that is going to be here next season... Jordan frickin' Addison. We got his jerseys on sale right now. If you guys go over to chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey, you can pick up your Jordan Addison jerseys today. I think it's sweet. He's wearing number three. He's going to look great. Him and Justin Jefferson, they're going to make one of the best wide receiver duos in the NFL. So if you guys haven't already, go get your Jordan Addison jerseys. Head over to chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey. But this is also a quote that Kevin Seifert had to say about Alexander Madison. And he said, all indications are that O'Connell would use Madison as an every down back. Similar to last season, when Cook received 74% of carries, O'Connell, in fact, offered up his three down assessment last week when asked a general question about the state of the running back position. And listen, I do think Madison could be a third, three down running back in the NFL, but like I was mentioning, I want split carries. I want a more running back by committee because I do think it just kind of helps the other running backs. Like I think they can all kind of help each other where their legs are fresher and kind of just more active in the months of December, January, and February where football really matters. And we always say this, like if the Vikings were going to have to maybe travel up to Philly in the cold or maybe even travel up to, I don't know, even though Detroit, Detroit plays indoors or Green Bay in December, like the run game and the defense, that's what travels in the NFL. And I want the Vikings running backs, fresh legs, active legs, and a running back by committee, that helps that. One guy I kind of want to focus in here, on here right now is Ty Chandler, the fifth-round pick out of last season. He's an absolute dog. I mean, his preseason highlights last season for the Minnesota Vikings and limited carries, he popped off my screen. But this is his career college stats. Started off at Tennessee, and then he transferred over to North Carolina. I mean, he had 603 carries, just over 3,100 yards, 26 touchdowns, and with 5.2 yards per carry. I've been a big fan of Ty Chandler ever since the Vikings drafted him, and I really want to see him get more run. This is actually a quote from Kevin O'Connell, the Vikings head coach, talking about Kane Wangwu and Ty Chandler, kind of the third and fourth string running backs for the Minnesota Vikings. He said, between Kane and Ty, there already seems to be a really nice competition brewing there because both of these guys are having a really solid springs and kind of showing their versatility. Can they impact us not only in the run game, but the pass game? And I'm ready for that. And I also think KOC, I think he's ready to move on off of Dalvin Cook. Like we saw last year, as Kevin kind of mentioned earlier, the Vikings gave Dalvin Cook 
the ball 74% of carries. Like, I also think Kevin O'Connell, he wants to kind of get that more running back by committee. And you do have that option with Ty Chandler. You know, with um, even a guy like Dwayne McBride, who he drafted, and then even like a guy like Kane Wangu, who's been kind of used as a special teams gadget guy early on in his career. But give him a jet sweep. Give him a screen pass. Use him more offensively because the Vikings really haven't, even before Kevin O'Connell and Kane Wangu's rookie year. Like, the Vikings just kind of used him specifically in special teams. I want them to use him more on offense and especially get Ty Chandler the ball. But let's narrow in on Dwayne McBride, my favorite draft pick from this last year's draft. These numbers, these look like video game numbers. This is just 2022 stats for my man Dwayne McBride. 7.4 yards per carry. 233 carries for just over 1,700 yards. 19 touchdowns. If you guys are bored later tonight, honestly, just go on YouTube. Look up Dwayne McBride highlights from UAB this last season. This dude's an absolute dog. This kind of just speaks to a point. Another running back that the Vikings can kind of throw in there and just kind of be another kind of workhorse, another guy that would just kind of eat up carries to kind of keep everybody fresh. But this was a report that came out earlier today, more on the Dalvin Cook situation. This was from Albert Breer, and quote, he said, Dolphins almost traded for Dalvin Cook last March. And we've kind of known this, that the Dolphins have been connected heavily to Dalvin Cook. Obviously, Dalvin Cook being from Miami, you know, he always got excited. He got very excited when uh, the Vikings played down there this past season. He's talking about how much he loves Miami. He still, he still has family down there. So obviously, if Dalvin were to be cut, like I would circle the Miami Dolphins as probably the favorite to go get him. But I do think Dalvin, there's a if I had to put a percent chance on it that he ends up in the AFC East, I think it's a 90% chance. And honestly, if I had to put it somewhere, I think it would be probably 40% to the Dolphins, 40% to um, the Bills, and maybe we'll go 10% for the Patriots and the Jets, split it up in between those two. But I do think Dalvin Cook will be in the AFC East next season. And I will say it would be pretty cool to see James Cook and Dalvin Cook pair up in Buffalo. I think we could see a, maybe a potential bidding war. You know, maybe a team could throw a fifth or a fourth round pick to go get a guy like Dalvin Cook just to kind of ensure that he doesn't go to their division rival. But again, these were the stats the past four seasons for Dalvin. Again, man, that 2020 season, he was so special. Like, I remember saying it to my dad, my brother, whoever I was talking to about the Minnesota Vikings and just talking about Dalvin Cook. That 2020 season, when he was healthy and he was 100%, there wasn't another running back in the league that I would take over him, but we've seen the regression. Like, we can just look on the yards per carry on screen right now. 5.1, 4.7, 4.4. We've seen that decline from Dalvin. And honestly, I just think it is time to move on. But let me know, how would you feel? Pretty general question here. When Dalvin Cook is traded or cut, how are you going to feel? Because I've kind of been... Obviously, I want the Vikings to move off Dalvin Cook, but I do think I would be sad because he is a, you know, he's a great player for the Vikings. He's been great for the community. He's been a great locker room guy. Everything you wanted him to be with that second round pick out of Florida State, I honestly think he's lived up to that expectation. But let me know, how would you feel if Dalvin Cook is probably inevitably traded or cut? And again, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys made it to the end of today's show, just give me a skull down in the comment section. I want to look in like U.S. Bank Stadium on game day. And we'll see. We'll see if Dalvin Cook is, you know, inevitably traded or cut in the next coming weeks. I mean, I would be shocked if this time next week Dalvin Cook is still a Minnesota Viking. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed and stay in the loop. As always, Skull Vikes.